Okay, so we're continuing our conversation talking about how we can synthesize alkyl halides from alcohols, right? We've already discussed method A using an SN2 versus an SN1 reaction. Let's talk about part B on how to do this. In part B, we're going to be using specific reagents. We're going to be using the reagent SOCl2 or PBr3. Okay, SOCl2 or PBr3. All right, here's SOCl2. That's what that structure looks like. And PBr3 is just a phosphorus with three bromines around it. All right. So these are two special reagents that can be used to convert an alcohol into an alkyl halide, right? So if I take ROH and I treat this with SOCl2, obviously this has a chlorine in it. That's going to convert that into our alkyl chloride. If you take an alcohol and treat it with PBr3, right, that will change the alcohol into an alkyl bromide, okay? What we need to know about both of these reactions, okay, is that these reactions occur via an SN2 reaction mechanism. Okay, so we can convert alcohols into alkyl chlorides and alkyl bromides using these special reagents but they occur via an SN2 reaction mechanism. So what does that mean, right? For these alcohols, our alcohols have to be primary or secondary only. These reagents will not work, right? These reagents will not work for tertiary alcohols, right? Because we can't do an SN2 reaction mechanism if it's tertiary. So these have to work via a primary or secondary only, all right? So it's, it's pretty simple, right? If you have a primary alcohol and you treat this with SOCl2, right, you will get out a chlorine if you treat this with PBr3, right, you will get out your alkyl bromide, all right? Now, what's special about these reagents is we don't need to know the mechanism, okay? So we, we're not going to cover the mechanism. But I just want to talk about the mechanism a little bit so we can kind of understand the reaction a little better. Remember the problem with alcohols is that they're bad leaving groups, right? So if you think about what we have to do in this reaction is there's two things. We sort of have to first turn the alcohol into a good leaving group and then do our substitution reaction. So there's kind of two parts to it. And these reagents are special, right, because they do that. So one reagent, SOCl2 or PBr3, does two things the alcohol will react with the SOCl2 or the PBr3, turning it to a good leaving group. And when it does it, it releases a chlorine or releases a bromine, which can come and do our backside attack. So what's neat about these reagents is it really does both, right? It will turn the OH into a good leaving group, release a chlorine that can then do the SN2 reaction, backside attack. Right, or the oxygen can interact with the phosphorus, releasing a Br minus, which then can do the SN2 reaction to get the products we get here. Okay. So what that means, right, is when if we look at an example like this, where I have stereochemistry, right, we have to remember that these reactions occur via an SN2 process. Right, so what does that mean about our stereochemistry? When we have an SN2 reaction, what do we have? Right, SN2, right, we have backside attack. 
which equals an inversion of stereochemistry. Right? So in our primary, this was not a stereo center. I didn't need to worry about stereochemistry. But in our example here, we do have a stereo center. So what that means is when we add this chlorine, the chlorine has to be back. Right? And if we added PBr3, because this occurs via the SN2 mechanism, which we're not drawing out, we do have to recognize that our bromine is back. Okay? So again, SOCl2 and PBr, oops, sorry, PBr3, excuse me, work for primary and secondary alcohols only. Okay, they work for primary and secondary alcohol, alcohols only. They do that via an SN2 reaction to form our alkyl halide. So if you have, if you have stereochemistry, you have to make sure that you invert it.